everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today is day six of Acrylic April. We are doing the Sunflower, which I'm actually really pumped about. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He is going to be tracking me with all of our cameras, making sure that you're really up close and in the paint action, so that if you're painting along at home, you can really easily see everything I'm doing and duplicate it yourself. I'm going to be explaining everything step by step. I have been so excited to see all of your paintings. I cannot wait to see today's sunflowers. I think I'm ready to just jump on in. Oh, wait, I have to tell you guys something now. What's Make that? sure on each of these videos that you check that description below and you click the link to the website because on the website is a ton of extra help and information, materials, exchanges, all of that, always in the description below and on the website. So good resource, good to be aware of when you're doing this journey with us as you're coming along. Now I'm ready to jump in. I'm so antsy for this today. All right. Some flower, some flower, some flower, some flower. Woo, 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 woo. Some flower, some flower. All right. So we had done our aqua background. And uh, if you watch the gritting in, I had a very interesting journey gritting this all in. Yeah. <laughs> because petals are very complicated. In fact, I think I'm going to do this with the peonies in the future as soon as we're done with acrylic April. Um, I moved the bee from in front of the sunflower over here to the side because I just felt he would be cuter here in this space and show up better um other than that i'm kind of keeping it pretty much the same the colors are over here we have a uh, cad yellow hue we have vermilion we have burnt sienna we have phthalo green we have primary blue we have mars black and titanium white you can use naphthal red naphthal red medium cad red medium cad red light for the vermilion and you can use a uh, phthalo blue easily for the primary blue so you should be okay. Let me adjust that camera over. I didn't realize that I couldn't quite. Uh. Get the. You got to adjust the camera. I can do that. Hold on. Oh, we got time for the palette, right? They want to see the stuff. I have magic. Is magics. So hold on a second. I should be able to. Um, Zooms out. Yeah. And then I can kind of. What is. Uh, what is it just. It uh, just uh, doesn't want to see all the words. I just got to make a. It's so interesting to see him make these adjustments in real time. This is live. Okay. He's adjusting this live. <laughs> just go, go, just want to say camera. that I think in the overall scheme of things, that is pretty darn cool. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my turquoise mix again. And of course, I am missing one thing, which John's going to grab for me, which is What's a palette that? knife because I washed them and forgot to put them out. Oh, did you? You know, in the prep work like okay. you do. So he's going to go get me a palette knife. Because, you know, that's what he gets to do. Switch cameras and find missing art supplies. <laughs> Scotty knife, an angle knife. Uh, just oh, give me a cranked diamond. Just, 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 just a cranked diamond. Not every knife, just a knife. <laughs> too many knives. Too helpful. Uh, I got to get a little paint off the back. So basically, oh, thank you. I actually really prefer the sharp diamond on the cranked handle to mix. The reason I like to use an artist knife to mix is it gets you through that initial uniform mix and so you can mix two colors together fairly easily getting a large amount of a particular secondary color here that you've done from both of these not strictly a secondary color in color terms but secondary from the two pigments if that makes sense so once you get a nice aqua which again is anywhere between two parts primary blue and one part phthalo green to uh sorry primary blue to one part phthalo green or one uh one to one either in there anywhere you're gonna have a good color any of those mixes if you like i'm gonna get my brush now i think i will be starting with a number eight cambridge bright you could use any brush that you have and what what you really want to do is start thinking about the values how light or dark something is on the background so i'm going to begin to paint the sky around my gridded image and my little bee body, not too perfectly, but enough where I'm leaving my objects where I kind of understand that they are. This is going to help me be a little more loose and expressive too. And that is the goal this month, isn't it? To paint more confidently, to see objects and relationships better, and also to, to paint looser and freer and all those exciting art things, which you guys are doing a really good job of, actually, in my opinion. This kind of comes through here. 
and it stays in that same deep value, which I really like. I love this sort of crazy aqua color. It's just one of my very favorites. One of my favorites that I like to do. Now, as I come up into this upper corner, I get to do some fun stuff because we're going to paint some clouds. And if you've painted clouds before, it's real easy to get wrapped up in the idea of what they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a very light blue. Lots of white, very little of the turquoise. And we're just going to come up here. This will be our little darker section. Can you kind of see how that is? And these are very light, aren't they? They're get a little more. They're clouds, so they'll have highlights and lowlights. This is what's here, coming in through here. And the aqua background really allows us to be a little bit expressive and playful with what we're doing. There we go, nice little upper cloud. And you can do the same on the bottom because there's a nice little one happening here in the corner. So I'm not trying to do little circles. I'm not trying to do little puffs. And sometimes I think that's the hardest thing for us to feel as artists is that we get so caught up in the idea of an object, we don't necessarily really think about the color or hue or form of the object because we're too busy naming it, kind of trying to name it and claim it. And we're like, it's a cloud and cloud is this. So it's nice sometimes to step out of that. I'm going to bring a little bit more of my aqua around where I know I'm going to have my Mr. B. And I might do a little trick here, guys. I might come here and add just a little white so that Mr. B pants is almost, you know, kind of in a halo, if that makes sense. When we do him, that'll be really nice and help him to stand out, I feel. Give him a little. A little focus rinsing out now once I have that in I'm gonna just come in for him I will just grab a little of my black and I find that the little bee shape is just a little bean shape <laughs> that's all he is just a little bean mm. so I just got to get that in there and he's gonna start finding his own space right right away now when I did my value study I got a sense of where my darks and lights were. And basically, I'm going to begin on my inner sunflower with just a little black and brown. You need even deeper than that, right? One of the things I really enjoyed in the study. Pulling that in right there. Yeah. Or I should say in the value study you did was uh, how, um, what did I, how did you say it? The, uh, how efficiently you put the bee in. And how quickly, just with a few, just a very few uh, brush strokes, it just appeared. That is the goal of daily painting, isn't it? To just be efficient and with less, say, a lot more. And, yeah. you know, every time we take one of these journeys and we, we come through this and we're able to do that, it, it does do some good for us. Now, I'm going to add a little green to this mix and even a little bit of this yellow coming forward. And kind of warming up the center, if you guys remember. Yeah, um, maybe now, a little more yellow into that. So it's a little of the brown and the green. You're working some really dark values right now. Yes, I am. This is our big drama right here. Staline was just asking a really good question. Hi, Staline. How do you grid your your paintings? Well, on this particular journey, I actually put up a video for every single one mm -hmm. of me going through and gridding it and explaining it. Yeah. So, so this... if you click that link below, it'll take you to the website. Any of the ones that you're doing, it's there because I realize you might not have ever gridded before. And also each image is its own little grid journey. I'm mm -hmm. rinsing out right now. So you might want, you know, maybe more than the usual amount of grid information. I'm focusing a little bit more of the green and brown. I'm going to get some of my yellow into this because the center right here, right, was our more highlighted sort of area that we had. I'm trying to capture these things in a more loose, expressive manner. 
So uh, if that was the, if, if I understood the question, sometimes we ask, you know, questions online and then I don't understand them. So that's if I understood what you were asking specifically. Yes, I think you did. Okay. All right. Right there. So that's sort of that nice highlight. And then I felt like there was this really interesting uh, low value that happened. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my blue and my white. I'm going to be playful here. I'm going to take a little risk, guys. I'm going to talk about the shadow with this blue. You see how I'm doing? Yeah. And there's another one here. Just to say, hey, you know, there it was, it was here. Maybe right there. Talking about it being a little bit darker and in shadow. Ah, I like it. So very dark, the center area. It's got some lush color in it, but it's very dark. Now, wow. I am going to encourage you guys to lighten at least some of the tips and stuff of your uh, petals on these outer edges. I may have to turn the light above you down a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it's a little bright. Just the tips I'm going to lighten up. And the reason that I'm doing this is so that these edges, which are more in the sunlight, but they're over the blue. Yellow is so transparent. I don't know if you guys have noticed that in this journey. I, I'm sure you probably actually have. But yellow gets so transparent that sometimes we can't see some of it. Uh, and it, in the in the underneath shows through, and then you're just sitting there going, "Wow, man!" I. So it doesn't have to be every every petal, but we're just going to catch some of the ones that we had happening here. And I'm glad that I gritted this because I get a little lost in petals. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that experience. I was like, "What you doing over here?" Oh, that's right. You said you were going to work on the light. So this is a trick that you can do. Don't make little even, completely even patterns on these leaves. And the reason is, is that you don't want to create an under kind of glazing line that's super obvious. So if you need to blend these back and soften that lightning into the blue, the blue here is okay because we actually want the yellow to darken a good bit. But there's a whole bunch of places on the tips that we're going to want it to be just a bit more brighter and saturated. So that's a little step that I'm going to go ahead and take to help make sure that when I get into the petals, they are fun and they are light. While I'm here, I might take a little of my green and brown together. And I'm going to come right underneath. Now, I'm going to move this over. John has been pointing out to me that this whole time, I have been moving my body and not the canvas, which is not a good habit to get into. You want to move the canvas, not your body. So this is the under shadow of the leaf, the green that we see underneath. Oh, there we go. And then we're going to get right into the yellow, right? Quite a lot of yellow, in fact. Sorry about that. There, I found it. We're going to come here and on this tip here. Put some of that right in there, showing the highlight where the leaf has been over. And then if you get some yellow and just some white into it, you can get another layer of kind of lighter value and come maybe to the tip here and give that a little highlight so that it pops up a bit. And there. Just make sure that that shape isn't visually distracting. Now, while I'm at this, Mr. B pants. I love Mr. B. Mr. B, Mr. B is very exciting to me. So for the wing, I'm going to do a little black and a little white, making kind of a gray. And I'm going to put just a smidge of yellow in it. I'm going to loosely mix. See how that is? Yeah. Oh. And I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to make this little, little touch stroke. Look at that little kind of energetic touch stroke. I'm going to do the same here. So I want the stroke to be a little bit bigger. 
and I want it to feel like a wing, but we're just showing little, little skips of the wing, just a little blur of the wing, because we're painting loosely today. Now I'm going to get some of my yellow, a little bit of my red into it. I'm going to come here. Give a little back some kiss. A little forward kiss on that. Not too much though. He will get away from us. I feel like that's he a needs, great bee. Isn't he a great bee? He needs a little lighter value up at the top of the wing. And let's give I'm gonna this is gonna be interestingly hard. I'm gonna come in and just Give some highlight a couple places to him. There we go. Now he's got a little highlights. You can see him. He's a uh, flying to his sunflower. Right? A flying to his sunflower. And I'm going to pick up a little of the kind of green and yellow and white. I think I want to come right here. And again, talk about this highlight the center of that sunflower that I really liked. Now, I'm going to take my yellow, a good bit of it. I'm going to add a little red to it, as you do. And then also a bit of brown. See how we've got here? I'm going to come here. This part of my sunflower is that deeper, darker color. Again, yellow, a little red, and it's got some brown, which kind of brings that value to a deeper range. And if you think about some of those value studies that we did, that's incredibly helpful, right? Yeah. That's why we want to do those so we know where that is. So that shadow mix, again, is a little yellow bit of red and some brown. They're loving the bee. I love the bee too. Mr. Bee Bee. Mr. Bee's a happy bee. I'll come here and we've got some nice shadow really on these petals quite close to the center. And I'm just trying to pull this value up a bit in a ring around there. And you can see I'm very loose. We are loosening up. We are in our journey. Now, I don't really think, but for a couple places down here, that this, I'll turn this over so I can see what I'm, sometimes I turn my reference over as well, so that I can see what I'm referencing a little bit easier. And this type of loose painting will help you when you're trying to paint uh, even a more realistic sunflower. There's a shadow there, right? So we talk about that shadow. There you go. As I'm coming through, I can add a little more yellow and red to the mix. A little more yellow. Well, let's kind of start to work it out here again. I always like to keep moving my this nice petal that's right here. Remember that guy? Let's pull that shape in. See, so I'm just doing big, chunky brush strokes today, aren't I? Yeah, it's looking Everyone good. Noticing that? The big, chunky brush strokes the day to day. You know, coming forward, and then these could be just a little bit more red into them. A little bit right there. And then maybe I come and grab some of my just yellow here. 
we'll talk about like some of the edge of this happening. A little bit of highlight yellow there. So what I'm doing, what you see me doing is just looking for different values. I'm going to have to rinse out. And again, trying to paint as loose as I can while still maintaining a painting that I'm enjoying. I may come back into my darker value mix. And just make sure I have this deeper range for right back here. There we go. Back into you too. I want to keep some of those shapes, don't I? I'm liking it too. I really do like it. It's pretty. And I like yellow. I really do. I like yellow. I like it quite, quite a lot. Taking a little bit of a light value through here. See how we're doing? Still talking about what we've got going on. So. I, oh, I love that in there. It really is. That's so just keeping it deep, but, you know, also. I'm going to change my water because my water is starting to get a little dirty. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, to the funner yellows. Funner. Funner yellows. Also, interestingly enough, you can get a little green into your yellow. Just trying to pull that little kind of hue in there, a little green into that yellow. See how that does? So it's another way of deepening those value tones. And what's shocking is if you don't get too green, I'll add some of that right here. You can avoid getting too green, popping that there. You can really keep your overall piece very bright and cheerful. How are you guys doing? This is some wild work we're doing, right? Yeah. Are you feeling it? You're painting loose? I'm feeling it. Well, I know you are. <laughs> Watching it. Co-captain. Co I'm, I'm like the backseat driver who... Is a distractor. A distractor backseat driver? I'm like, ooh, look at that shiny thing over there we should talk about. Instead we should of talk teaching. about that shiny thing. <laughs> so. so. I'm just trying to. A little big there on my pedal, but that's okay. I will work that out in a second. I'm trying today to work one brush. Work loose and work my values, which has been my personal goal on this journey. And you're in the, you just hit 24 minutes. Whoa, so I'm doing it this time. You're doing pretty, pretty quick. I am. Well, I'm trying to learn a thing here, just like everybody else. Get better at it. There we go. I want this to be nice enough here so when I come back with my bright colors, I really feel them. You know, here I'm going to get back into this. Make sure these are worked into these petals, right? Yeah. Look at that. That is a trip and a half. What is it? Trip and half. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So just my yellow and my vermilion now. I'm looking for these little spots where I can define edges, color spaces. There's a nice little side petal that we had. As per our usual thing, where this will come together is in that last highlight, hopefully. But you can see how we've kept the colors bright even though we went over the blue. Mm -hmm. We already have some pretty spectacular daily painters and group too in the Facebook group. And you can tell they're like loose, they're brave, they're taking risks. <laughs> I'm like, look at these guys go, man. That's spectacular. That's I what you want to do. All the art. Hmm? I, I really love seeing all the art coming in. It has been amazing. All the goop out of my brush. Oh, I just wiped it out. And I'm just trying to look to see where I see shadows and highlights. If I can accurately do that, then I can do pretty good. We have some of those here. Meaning thick. Paint it thick. It's always interesting to me try to see how we can create shape and form. Oh, the loose sunflower. Yeah. Now I think where it's going to come together, fingers crossed, will be in our next value. So I'm going to take my pure yellow and my white loosely mixed and load it on the edge. I am going to find a few of those edges and bright highlights. See that? I mean, I'm thinking. I'm not going to imply that I'm not like working. At it. <laughs> I am. I think uh, Joanne just described my art syndrome. Uh huh. It's attention de deficit. Ooh, what's that? Yeah, I think I think we all have moments <laughs> of that, right? I'm going to put a little highlight like that here, and there's a bit there. There we go. Where all does this one go? That one comes down. So you can see I'm just trying to capture the little petals as they would capture light. Can you guys see it? Mm -hmm. Is anyone ooing? I can't tell. <laughs> I am. Okay, you're ooing. I'm ooing. There we go. Tammy says, oh, thank you so much. Oh, so Jane helped Tammy in chat. She wasn't using enough water on her brush. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the thing. Sometimes there's a lot that happens within your painting experience that can really throw you. I'm adding a little bit more yellow back into that. 
I'm gonna get you moved over here a little bit so they're not getting in the mix. There we go. Just trying to talk about those things. Ooh, hard. Not simple. Get some just more prettier yellow right in there. That petal. Catching those little bits. Are we seeing a sunflower yet? I'm seeing the sunflower. Now the bottom. Actually, it feels to me like it has a lot more light in it that I could pick up on. I'm trying to see that. As we're going. Still got my leaf. And I think I'm I'm in there. I get to do like maybe one, two more things to see if I can pull it all together. Just a smidge of that. Waiting in my thing. I am. Now, could you explain uh, just about what the right amount of water to load is? Well, um, I can, but I have a whole video on that. If you go on Facebook, I have a video called Water Brush Paint. Oh, yeah, that's good. And it's about 30 minutes and it really goes into all the variables because there's so many variables about how much water you want on a brush. If you are trying to thin paint, you put more on there. If you're trying to paint thick, you put different. If you have pro paints, it's one amount of water. And if you have student paints, it's another amount of water. So there's a lot in that. So that video is, I think, the best for that particular question. We'll see, we'll see if we can get a link for that in here. Yeah. I think that's the very best one. That's what we'll do. We'll find that mm -hmm. thing. Not that you're like, but Facebook. And, I, and, you know, it's well, on our website, so you can view it from there. I also realize we're at 33 minutes, so we're getting close to the end of your timed allotment today so are we i can't keep fiddling all right i'm gonna stop fiddling. i'm gonna do one last thing because i can't help myself i added some vermilion to this because i just wanted the center to be yep. ah okay i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop you're gonna stop i'm gonna stop you think, you think that's it i like it i think that yeah i i think this is a loose expressive you gotta sign it sunflower painting that i did in 30 minutes uh I'm getting closer to my goals it's it did great i think i'll come here and i'll sign over maybe under the leaf Just trying to come up with a color that i can sign i'm gonna dip more in there But on the thing with water, remember, it's learnable, it's doable. You can troubleshoot any paint, any clinic, any brush, any humidity, anything. I got all fussy with my little signature here, didn't I? There we go. It's in there, though. <laughs> That's pretty great. All right. We did this little... So oh, I have to do just one little thing. I'm sorry. You know how I always do this after I finish painting? What are you doing? Gonna add some beef eats. <gasps> Those look good. Good addition. I just always have to have my little beef eats, you know? That's a very good addition. Little beef eats, because they, they have little, they have personality. He's gotta have something you can land with. Yeah. Okay. All right. One, two, three. Boom. 
Getting closer. Getting closer. Coming up on day seven. Getting better at the value. Getting tighter at the process. Getting looser with my expressiveness. It's a journey. And understand this isn't the only way to do it. If you are naturally tighter and you're not interested in loosening it up, feel free to paint this as is natural to you. Just don't wear yourself out. <sighs> I'm excited about tomorrow. We'll show you a sneak peek at the end of the video. And in we generally update the values and the grids and all of that by a few hours after the show. So we go as yeah. fast as we can. Sorry about the other day. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.